Hi, it's Tim Sandelback uh, with another video in this series to support the module. And in this one, we're looking at particle counting, which is an essential requirement to assess the uh, airborne concentration of particles in a clean room. And that's fundamental to verifying that the clean room is operating at the required level of cleanliness. OK, so with um, particle um, counting, um, it's fundamental for classification and also it forms a valuable part of routine monitoring. So it's there for classification, it's there for routine monitoring. Within EU GMP, there's a requirement to look for particles of two cutoff sizes. That's greater than and equal to 0.5 micron and greater than and equal to 5 micron. So these are important, these are cutoff sizes and they're not um, discrete particles. So this is why the particle counter will be running at a continuous sampling mode. And although monitoring determines the level of these ostentatiously inert, non-viable um, particles, such monitoring also gives a high level of assurance regarding the presence of microorganisms. And a high level of particles may imply a corresponding level of microorganisms, but that does depend upon the origin of the particles. So, for example, if we've got metal grinding upon metal, then it's unlikely those particles are going to be microbial. However, if we've got poor personnel practices, then there's a good chance that they are microbial. Um, so we do need to sometimes um, interpret particle counts in different ways. But any forms of particles might be a signal that there's an adulterant um, in the product. When we're doing aseptic processing, then real-time data can also be uh, very useful for alerting the supervisor of a potential um, problem. So some important points around particle um, counting that I'd just like to expand upon. Um, so for the data to be relevant, the particle counters should be located close to the main activities. So the particle counters, I think, have a certain range, so it needs to be um, close to what we actually want to measure. To ensure better accuracy, these locations should be risk-based, not simply based upon locations used in classification, but informed with an awareness of what's actually going on in the area. Particle counters should meet and be calibrated to ISO 21501 standard. Where we're monitoring um, particles within unidirectional airflow devices, then these counters should be fitted with isokinetic probes. These are the stainless steel contraptions that go on the end of the particle counter tubing. And these help to straighten the air and to make sure the air is going through the counter with a uniform velocity. And these probes should always be orientated in the direction of the airflow. It's also important that the particle counter tubing length is as short as possible and not ever to exceed one meter. Otherwise, we're going to get dropout of particles. And also that the tubing is not kinked or bent. If it does need to um, fold slightly, then the radius should always be greater than one meter. We also need to understand the conditions and the way people operate because particle counters can sometimes be prone to false negatives, so spraying of gloves. We want to have our glove spray station away from where we're situating the particle counter. And we need to be careful not to damage the particle counter because they can easily be contaminated with things like glove spray and other sorts of particular matter. We also need to verify that our particle counter itself is not pumping out contamination. So studies of the air exhaust around particle counters are of great importance and um, are recommended to be conducted. OK, so this brings this little video to an end. And uh, what we've looked at is the operation and the, some of the principles behind the particle counter. See you later.